Okay, continuing a variation of the last problem. So far we have this cell diagram and we solved for the voltage by looking it up on the cell or the electron or reduction potential table. We got positive 0.43 volts. Then we use that to solve for delta G, which gave us negative 83 kilojoules, which tells us the reaction is spontaneous. And now we want to know what is KEQ for this reaction. So we had a reaction in the previous chapter that related delta G and KEQ, but there is another reaction or another equation that relates the cell potential at standard conditions to KEQ. And it's R T over N F times natural log of KEQ. Okay. Well, we have cell potential. R is 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin. T is the temperature in Kelvin, and we want to know this at 325. N is the number of moles of electrons, which was 2, same, same N as the previous problem. And F is Faraday's constant, which is the same as the previous problem. So essentially we're just solving, rearranging this for KEQ. We can't get rid of this natural log until we get rid of all this stuff. So I guess showing my work, uh, we're going to multiply N and F on both sides. R and T are going to be divided off of both sides, so that that cancels with that, and that cancels with that. Okay, I'm going to rewrite this so it looks a little prettier. Oh, also I got a little division line in there. Um, so, natural log of KEQ equals all of this stuff. So, N, F, for R, T, E, sub cell. To get rid of this natural log, because we're solving for KEQ, we have to take E to the both sides. So KEQ is equal to E to all of this stuff. All of that is an exponent. So I'm gonna plug everything in because we know it all at this point. N was the same as it was up here, which is two. Faraday's constant is a huge number, which is 96,485. per mole. E sub cell, I'm just going to go ahead and write in the top there, is 0.43 volts, but I'm going to write it as joules per coulomb so we can watch the units cancel out because one volt is a joule per coulomb. R is 8.3145, it's one of the gas log constants, joules per mole Kelvin. And T, we were, the question was asking for this at 325 Kelvin, so that's what we're going to plug in. All of that is an exponent. So, typing this in is going to be a pain. So, what I'm going to do is, I don't know, I guess hit e to the x and just be really careful with my parentheses. Two times 96485 times 0.43. That's all on the top. Divided by 8.3145 times 325. Ah, crap, I forgot a parenthesis there, too. Second insert parenthesis. So I've got essentially all of these things in one set of parentheses on the top multiplied together. I've got these things in parentheses on the bottom multiplied together. And all of that is in parentheses because it's an exponent for E. We're probably going to get a big number. Yeah, so 2.17 times 10 to the positive 13th. So let's see if all this makes sense. We have, a po we have a positive voltage, which means if we hook this all up, the battery should run and generate electricity. The delta G that we calculated based off of that is negative, which means the reaction is spontaneous, meaning that it should go in the forward direction, which is what the voltage tells us. If this was at equilibrium, we have a very, very large equilibrium, 10 to the 13th. So this is essentially a 2 with 13 zeros after it. And so that means it's going to be very much so going in the forward direction, which also goes along with it being very spontaneous and also being a battery that works in the forward direction.